Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad, right here, Premier Leather Crafters. Y'all, give me just a second to make sure that this lighting, I get this lighting worked out. It is not cooperating with a brother right now. I'm telling you. So I got lights and stuff, you know, that's shining and glistening and glazing. So I want it to be the best light so to do this video for you guys. Um, and today, I'm really excited about this video. And this is not even my design, but when I saw this, and it only took him a few... This is a, another episode of knowing what your tools can do. Learning what your tools can do. Knowing what your tools can do. And have those tools manipulate the leather in a way that it creates another shape and design. And the great part about this is, again, when I saw it, and I'm gonna go ahead and be casing my leather while I'm talking to you guys, so we can get right off into this and not waste any, uh, uh, or not waste a whole bunch of time, because this design can work for any project that you might have going. It can work for any project that you might have going. And I think it'll fit into any shape. So if you're doing wallets or whatever, and even if you have that square shape or however you're making your wallets, uh, if you're doing the long wallets or a billfold, trifold, I think this pattern will work because there are, there is a way that you can finish that with a, uh, either a bordering tool or a camouflaging tool or something like that to finish out to the edges. So you just want to work your way from the center point to the outside point. But this um, design right here, and, and and I'm going to get off on a tangent, I know, because in this leather business, uh, in this leather world, there's nothing more important than giving a crafter their due for the work that they have put into something. Even if it's something, now if that crafter gives you something for free, like with this design here, and this was done by a guy named Skeeter Yasko. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. You know, my southern drawl a little bit kind of gets in the way sometimes. But um, Skeeter Yasko, not Steven, Skeeter Yasko. And as big as this leather world is, it's still yet small. And the longer that you do this or the more... That, that you do it, and the more you get off into it, you'll start picking up on other crafters, um, not just their skill set, um, but you'll start to see how they how they think, you know, where where they where where they are going with a piece, uh, or whether it's tooling or whether it's stamping. And that's why I know when I first started seeing this, the fact that the first six, seven stamps that I saw Skeeter do in this tutorial. I knew where the pattern was going. I knew where it was going. And that's the just from doing it over and over years ago. Now, I never would have thought about putting that together again. But what we're going to do today is I'm going to take the X534. Golly, I didn't remember my glasses. X534. And this is a basket weave stamp. And we're going to make geometric shapes and designs with a basket weaving stamp. But... What I want to get off into, though, real quick, and I'm not going to be on this long, is as in this leather crafting business, when you put so much time and work and energy into, even if you're a, the one that's drawing patterns, you put a lot of time and a lot of work into that. And there is nothing that will basically get you ostracized or standoffish to me. And I've seen it. I've witnessed it standoffish as as to take somebody take credit for somebody else's work and design now i know you guys have watched and been along with me long enough in these videos to where you guys have heard me give credit to my sheridan teacher without her i mean i wouldn't be as far along as i am with my sheridan design uh if it hadn't been for my uncle and my father and uh, another man that actually took what my uncle and father tried to instill in me, uh, 
and take that to another level. I got a man by the name of Chance Chancellor. Chance actually told me how to manipulate the eye. You know, when I first started taking the classes at Tandy, uh, and that's every person has taken my craftsmanship to a higher and a higher level. And so, don't get off into this business, and you see something that's real cool. You know, even even if you now if you're doing it as a hobbyist, you know, you're just making stuff for family and friends just to have something to do or uh, you're an enthusiast, you know, just a weekend warrior leather crafter, you know, hey, do you, you know, but it, it, when you're in a situation or not a situation, but when you're in a, uh, a business like mine, don't see, do, please do not jack another and that's i know that's the slang word because you know even though i might be country i'm still from the street don't jack another crafter's uh idea uh don't 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 um take another crafter's artwork and claim it as yours or even if you don't claim it as yours don't cast off that image or that that thought that you are the one that come up with this all on your own. That will not only tick a lot of people off, but it'll make a lot of people stand off from you because they know that you are out here jacking for jacking for crafts or you jacking for people's stuff. Now, I'm not gonna stay on that too long because, but if you're getting off in this thing to do business, you know, don't don't don't, don't take another person's uh, credit. And put it out there as, as is yours. You know, that's one thing that irks my nerve. Because your name and your brand is all that a crafter has. Your name, your brand, and behind that is because what backs up your name and your brand is your craftsmanship. And then for somebody to go out there and Chinese copyright it, you know, and then they're doing stuff as if you are doing it and they haven't even put the work in like you've done. It. But anyway, let's get off into this because my leather is case. But that's something you guys can can really put, you know, maintain and keep that in your noggin up there. So I'm going to adjust the camera so we can get the sub to doing this. But I want to show you guys how we're gonna how I'm gonna take the X. Man, I really need to get my glasses. X534 basket weave stamp. Now, I can't necessarily recall where I bought this from, but it's from one of three companies. I know I've had it for a number of years. Either come from Tandy, High Crafters, or Springfield. Is High Crafters even still in business anymore? I don't know if they're still in business anymore, but quite possibly it come from... Uh, but it could come from high crafters. I, I have no idea. A uh, company that was used to be out there in, in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area. They was in the big compete time, you know, uh, co competition thing in the earlier 2000s. <sighs> but anyway, let's move right along. But I want to show you guys how we're going to take, how I'm going to take this basket weave stamp and start creating geometric shapes to come up with another shape into the stamp work of the leather and it's just going to i'm telling you this thing is going to be great so let's get started family we're at that nine minute mark so to speak i'm going to move my camera over here out the way because i want you guys to actually see how this is going to go down this is going to go down let me adjust the light so I hope you guys can get a good angle on this. I think that's probably going to be about the best one. But now, this is how you're going to do this. And it's fairly it's fairly simple. I mean, even a cowboy can do it. But you're going to start out with a straight line. So regardless of what piece you're working on, even if it's on a wallet, a purse, or, or sandals, or a long wallet, billfold, trifold, whatever it is, you're going to put your straight line in the middle of that artwork. Not a deep impression, but just enough for you to see. 
Just enough for you to see. Now, at your starting point, you're going to take your basket weave and you're going to go, your basket weave is stamped, and you're going to go halfway on that basket weave stamp, and you're going to put it on that line. So the center of your basket weave stamp needs to look as so. Now, this is my line. My basket weave stamp is horizontal here. Now, now I'm going to go back and connect the legs of my stamp to each other. This is going to create our first shape. So I'm going to connect the leg, interior part of the leg to the exterior part of the first stamp as well as the interior part up here to my line. So you should have a shape that looks kind of like a, a well, an upside down seven. And then I'm going to go back and do the exact same thing to the other side. I'm going to connect my legs and connect my stamp. Now, and that should give you your first triangle. Now, I gave a little bit of space on this, and I don't know why. Maybe because I was doing it upside down. But you should have your first shape, which is this triangle. Uh, maybe, let me get this in the light for you guys. Can y'all see that? Now, that's your first shape there. Now, after which, I'm going to keep coming and connecting my legs. Actually, let me go this way. Now, and to help you out, let me show you how to help you out. When you're connecting your legs, to give yourself an idea of how far you want to go with, with your next step, just make a, you don't have to make a deep impression, but you just want to make a little line to where you can, where barely you can see that. I don't know if you guys can see that under the light in the camera, but just make a barely a little line, and that'll tell you how far you need to go with the angle of your stamp. And then we're gonna hit, and then I'm gonna connect there. So you should have this right here, two squares. And then I'm just going to keep going around and I'm just going to make a little light impression just so I can know how far to spread my leg apart. I don't know if you know if that sounded right, spread my legs apart, but ha, the legs on my stamp, you guys, get your mind out of there. And uh, I'm going to come right back. And the great part about this, when you know you're doing it right, you're going to come right back on the top side of that stamp, and it should line up with your first impression that you've done on the other one. Just to give myself a little idea of where my leg is going to go. Connecting the legs, connecting the legs. So, what you should have is a circle full of squares, just like this. Square, square, square. So, you should have six total squares. I mean, six, six total. Man, I've been out of school too long. Six total triangles going in a circle. And then, you should have this little shape in the center of that. It kind of reminds me of the paramedics uh, logo that's on the side of the paramedics truck. But that's what that looks like. So this is our first geometric shape. M taking other shapes to make a shape. So we have three shapes going on in a circle here. I mean, three shapes going on at once. We got six triangles that's going in a circle and then we have a different shape in the center. And then we're just going to keep connecting this throughout the whole into whatever piece you're working on. So, and I'll show you guys how this is going to spread. Because all we're going to do is just keep connecting. Now, 
So we want this to keep growing. So we're just going to make a little light impression. And bow. And keep plugging in. And it's just not going to stop. You just want that impression there just to let you know how far to spread your basket weave stamp apart. And what that does, that lets you know also. Uh, now, I leave this impression here just to let me know how far to spread my, 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 my basket weave. But I think it's more important to get that perfect V shape. First, so this is the most critical part of the pattern is to make sure that that V, this triangle, is close to perfect as possible. Because if it's if not, it's going to throw off the whole entire design. Now, and the thing is, you you should be able to see triangles all up and down your line as you fill in more spacing. More spacing. So that's why I just do that little light impression. And I get my V perfectly straight. Then I go back and connect my connect my, my shape. And then once I come over here, that last shape, it should match up perfect. And even if you want to spread it out a little bit, you can. So you can stay with the same shape all the way around. And we're just going to keep plugging. Keep plugging. Making sure that that V is there. That V has to be there. So, and when I come across here, and then I'm going to put this right there on top. And then I'm going to come right back here to give myself an idea. And if, if it starts to get to the point to where it's a little bit hard for you to leave your impression, just come back and recase your leather. Just recase it. It's not rocket science. And but and see, then you you can actually start seeing how easy it is to connect the rest of it because it'll all start filling in. That's what you want to do. And you can turn your piece as much as you want. Now, your line here, mm, your line should always stay connected. And then we're just going to make a little light impression. Put that there. And connect it. And then this right here should be perfect. And then you're just going to keep connecting. Now, as you start getting to the edge of your piece, then you guys can start seeing how you can just take a, a camouflaging tool or a bordering tool or, or even if you just want to tuck that and hide that into your border line, just use your background tool or beveler to uh, smooth that over, get that, that, that end a nice little fade into your border line. And you're just going to keep plugging. Keep Plugging your line in. Keep plugging your line in. And we're gonna actually gonna turn this up a little bit. Just to give myself an idea of where my line is gonna go, where my stamp is gonna go. And you don't have to make a very deep impression. You just want to make a little light one, just so you can see where your legs are connecting. And boom. Oh, Connect, connect, connect those triangles and keep it rolling. Now, I think you guys have got the logistics of this, but I want you guys to see the pattern on this. And we're right at 20 minutes on this, right around 20 minutes. But you see, geometric design, and you're taking a basket weave tool, and it, is, it doesn't have to be the X534. I've seen crafters that came on uh, uh, after they figured out how to do this and they've used the basket weave tool that has the state of Texas on there or they use the basket weave tool that has the rope design on it. I mean, you can use any basket weave tool to do this. Now, I found that um, 
this X534 is best for me because I have several basket weave tools and I haven't tried them yet, but I have an X, uh, a X513 and the difference is this one and I'm gonna just show you real quick and it might work, it might not work, I don't know, but this would be something that you can try or I might wanna try later on down the road and see but the legs on this tool is spread a little different. Hey, I think it will work. But they're spread out a little bit. So I really don't know if it will work because of the way that it's made. But it's actually giving me a different shape or a different layout of that same two. Wow. So yeah, it will work boys and girls. It really will work. And if you stick with the same format, just making sure that you lay that down flat. Hey, I kind of like this. And now see the design is not mine, but I decided to try another tool to make it mine. And you see the only difference between this pattern and this pattern? In the top pattern, the first pattern that we did, the legs are more straight on the basket weave tool. Now on that X513, the legs are more tilted at an angle. Let me show you guys that too. You see how that those legs are tilted at an angle? You see how they kind of spread at the top and on the bottom? So what it done, it actually created a different shape of the triangle. It makes the triangle more like an arrowhead type of deal, where it's more curved, curved around the side broadness of it. Which that's pretty cool. I like that. And it still kept that nice little um uh paramedic emblem in the middle. But this is it. Taking triangles, putting them in a circle, and to create a whole different shape out of a rectangular tool. That is cool beans right there. Hey, I hope this helped you guys out. Uh, let's get the camera and stuff straight now so I can sign off. But I hope this helped you guys out. I hope it gave you a little bit of insight of the, the importance of learning your tools and learning what your tools can do for you. I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to get this camera straight. Uh, learning what your tools can do. Uh, and that's the importance of playing around with your tools. So just see, just go out there and play around with it. And then we'll get off into another video. Now this, this, this design has been around for a long time. Uh, I've seen it done in several either older school videos and it's still taking a basket weave stamp and making this arrowhead design, which you can see this was just a practice piece because it's off. The key to making this piece really work and really stand out in your work is to make sure that that center line, when you start on that center line, the same line that we drawn on the scrap piece, making sure that you stay on that center line and keep, keep those V. This is actually what made me start doing the V shape first before I started doing my cross shape. Because if that V is not perfect, it's going to throw the whole entire design off. And I know you guys can see that because you see how it flows and then it started getting off here, getting off, getting off there. See, it'll throw it off. One, and this is a key example too. Let me show you this. See, you can see that's not off that much, but then it gets off way off here. And then I try to bring it back, but then it throws it off there. That's the key. And you can see my line. And you can tell where it started getting off the line. Once it started getting off your line, there's nothing you can do with it except look at it and remind yourself how to stay on the line. <laughs> but hey, this is Robert the Leather Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters with a, uh, another video of learning what your tools can do and 
using your tools to manipulate the leather to create different shapes. And again, shout out to Skeeter Yasko for coming up with that really, really cool design piece, man, with the basket weave stamp. I've never seen that done, but it only took about maybe four or five stamps, you know, for me to oh, that's what he's doing. Pow! And it all just clicked. It's just like it did for some of you out there. But hey, I'm going to sign off. Don't forget, hit the uh, subscription button down at the bottom, and you can also hit the little bell that's attached on there, and what it'll do, it'll send you out a chime or a ring or whatever it'll do to notify you and let you know uh, by email that I've just done another video just like I did for this video and you guys can always hit me up on all of my social media platforms uh, I'm on Facebook I'm on Instagram I'm on Twitter I'm on LinkedIn uh, not doing the snapchat thing yet I really don't understand that but anyway uh, Instagram uh, everything is on the premier leather crafters or um, or Cowboy PLC. I think my Facebook, yeah, my Facebook is Premier Leather Crafters. And you can go on there, hit the like page, man. You know, let's all stick together and help each other out. And I'll come back again with another one of these fire right off the press. You know, geometric tools, uh, geometric design with the basket weave. I wanted to make that real cool, but it just didn't turn out right. I'm getting too old. See you guys on the other side. Peace.